G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Pine posts have been an absolute revolution in agriculture and horticulture, not only for fencing, but also for complex trellis structures that have allowed us to improve and increase the efficiency of agricultural and horticultural production. But they do come with some disadvantages. The copper chromium arsenate used to finish off these posts is one of their biggest drawbacks. It's a highly toxic product that poisons the environment not only when the posts are produced, but then while the posts are being used immediately in the ground around them, and also it increases the difficulty of disposal of these posts. Now I would suggest to you that the two biggest problems for waste disposal and the two biggest expenses for farms when equipment comes to the end of its lifespan are treated pine posts and old irrigation. The pine posts are a major problem. What do you do with them? There's high charges for getting rid of them properly because of the CCA concentration and burning them for anyone with a conscience is just not an option because of the poison that you're releasing into the atmosphere and the soil. Well today I'm road testing a brand new product that promises to resolve both of these issues and provide just as much flexibility as the old pine posts allowing you to secure a range of fixings into it. This is the wood shield post. Basically, it's a plain pine post on the inside that's not treated with any chemicals, covered by recycled poly pipe. This product is impervious to water. It's even used in seawater with oyster farms to great effect. When you screw into it, apparently the poly pipe closes around the hole, completely sealing off from water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have a look at how they make this product. Then we're going to go out to a farm, we're going to use a post driver and see if it stands up to the impact of standard fencing practice. We're going to throw a heap of fixings into a post called Dave and we're going to throw him into a farm dam for a couple of weeks to see if he actually stands up to the water test. And then we're going to review the product, have a look at the positives and negatives, see if there are any changes to our practice that this product will allow. I hope you can stick around to the end and hopefully we can overcome the terrible problem of waste when using pine poles and irrigation pipe. If you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button, give it a little thumbs up. You've got no idea how much that helps the channel. Also, check out my webpage for curated content, blogs and a whole heap of other resources. So the first order of business was to get stuck in peak hour traffic for three hours to find out how these things are made at the Woodshield factory. All right, so it looks like we've just arrived at the factory. Let's go and meet Joseph, the foreman, and find out how this amazing product's made. Yeah. Joseph, how are you, mate? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, good to see you. Lovely to I'm meet you, mate. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for spending your time no and taking you through, taking no. us through all this. No worries. You see all our production here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's uh, making good. Looks like you've got a fair inventory yeah. here. Yeah, we have there like 1.8 the size, 2.4, yep. 2.6, all the size we make it white and black. So they're ready to go. Anyone yeah, who wants to, to go, order yeah. them, they're ready to go. Yeah, ready to go. So even though we were visiting on a Friday afternoon, Joseph was happy to crank up the machine and show us how they're made. I don't know about you, but I love seeing how stuff's made, particularly when it's being made to create almost zero waste. The plastic that's going on these posts has been recycled from irrigation lines. The water that's used to cool the posts down as they go through the treatment process is recycled and chilled on site. And the pine posts are a renewable resource, plantation grown, and no chemicals are applied to them in this process. And I love that. These poles are put on one at a time through a machine that matches them up with end caps. These end caps then seal the ends once the extruded plastic goes on. Let's follow the line down a bit and see how that interesting bit of the process happens. And so we have the posts entering the vacuum with their caps on them, all set up ready to go. That vacuum then feeds through to this pipe here where recycled plastic beads are heated up to 156 degrees Celsius, brought through and squirted in in a constant speed over the posts. So as they come out, you can see the steaming post 
making its way into a water cooler. This next couple of metres here is simply really cold water being sprayed onto it. That, well, that water is then recycled with this collection pump here through these chillers and reused. So no water is wasted in the process either. And here are our posts coming out of the end, nice and cold to the touch. Now all we have to do is cut them apart. Let's have a look and see how that works. They can set the length of the post here and this blade automatically tracks the end cap and cuts it precisely in half, meaning that there are no nicks and there are no cracks and there's no egress or exit for water at either end of the post. Once that's happened, we come down this roll here until we fill up brand new crates of posts ready for people like me to use in the paddock. Well Joseph, thank you very much for letting us in here and having a look at how all those posts are being made. No way, sir. I believe that you've got some posts for me, is that right? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to try them out in the paddock and see how they work as a fence post. Yeah, this is all yours, I look for you. Thanks Joseph, you're no. an utter gentleman and I appreciate you spending the time with no, us today no showing word, us no how word, they're made. No worries, sir. I will see you next time, thank you for coming. Good on you. Okay, so now we know the story of the post, we know what it's for and how it's made. Now I want to find out what's it like to actually drive in with a post knocker. So I want to put this thing through a bit of a torture test. I'm going to throw a few of the posts in the back of the ute and take them up to Allen's in Dixon's Creek. He's got a rocky hill that he runs cattle on. The ultimate torture test, ramming them in with plastic covering in a rocky paddock. Let's see how we go. Also, meet Dave the Post. Not much of a personality, but he does stick around. We're gonna throw Dave in the dam, filled with screws, filled with staples, and filled with fixings that you'd normally find in a fence. We're gonna leave him there for a couple of weeks and see how he fares. See if this plastic coating is truly waterproof when it has fixings in it. We're gonna do that at Allen's as well. Off you go, Dave. Dave's final ride. So we got the, uh, we've got the plastic post, we're about to pop it in. Alan's going to go through the usual rigmarole of drilling the pilot hole and then ramming it in. We've got the brand new Munro post driver here. It's got the percussion head, not the big dolly that drops down. Um, so it's all the latest tech stuff. And this is pretty much going to become industry standard anyway, so we may as well check it out with why, where the industry's going. Okay, let's get into it, Alan. It looks like we're hitting sort of a limestone or something, isn't it? It's pretty hot. Been a fair bit of friction getting in there. You can see that there's, there's stone and everything coming up out of the hole. So it's not necessarily an easy hole to be driving a post into. But that's what we're here for. Right. So we're going to drive the post straight in, hard onto rock. it up a little bit. The plastic coating's been scuffed but it hasn't actually come through has it? I'd say that's down hard on top of the rock. So we're going to pull this post out now because um, it's literally gone straight onto rock. Uh, we couldn't even drill through it. So let's see what the end of the post looks like after that treatment. Let's have a look at this end. See what's happened. No damage. No. That's a good start, isn't it? It's gone down through rock. It's been scuffed a bit. 
That's where the that's where the um, the cap is when they go yeah. onto the mouldings. So the actual pine post starts here. So the cap's taken a little bit of a scuffing, but nothing too serious. It hasn't been broken through in any place. So it's looking all right, isn't it? So because we hit rock for the first time, we're just going to bring it back a little bit and try again. Reasonably solid? Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. Now there's a bit of lip around here as, as Adam pointed out before. That's just where the moulding's been cut. The plug's actually in there and it hasn't actually come away at all. So that's still waterproof in there. So now we've tried putting a post in the rockiest ground Ellen's got. Now we're going to go down and actually put them in where he wants them. Um, and so we'll see how they go in normal ground. Recommended, but we're going to give it a go anyway. So that ran away from you a little bit as it was going in. Obviously, no point to direct it, no hole. Did it go in reasonably well? You were comfortable with that? Post is held up at this end. That's a little distortion in the plastic there. Yeah, I think that's been through the moulding process, some of them are a little bit funny like that. But it's reasonably tight in the yeah. ground, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This one's underneath a big old gum tree, quite flying under here. Now tell me about this clip here that you're using, Alan. You've been using these for a little while. I yes. haven't come across them before. Yeah. Davos fencing clip uh, made here in Victoria. Roofing screw and a bit of wire. And it's designed to put your barbed wire or your plain wire onto a pine post. So it works on a pine post, should work on this. Alright, let's have a close look at that. So it's two parts. Yes. And it's just a simple bent piece of wire that fits over your screw. Obviously the bend is pretty precise. Looks like a good product. A bit of power. And there you have it. I love discovering great things made by Australians by sheer accident. Well done, Dave. All right, now we've got to put in some four inch nails, I reckon. No problem. Might end up putting some nails in your post. Now what I reckon is going to be the torture test for this. Barb staples, 50 mil barb. And the reason why I reckon there'll be a torture test, can you see that little bit of a rip there? I reckon that's going to let water in. Now let's find out if Dave is still waterproof. Alrighty, it's time for Dave to sleep with the fishes. Hi Dave. So Alan, you're right if we leave him in your dam sleeping peacefully for yeah. a week. We'll see come what? back, we'll check him out. See what happens. Alright, fantastic. We'll make it a date. So what do you reckon Alan? You've used them now for about half an hour yeah. or so. First of all, they're nice and light and easy to handle. Yep. They don't 
splinter your hands. We're not wearing gloves, are we? Not wearing gloves, so yeah. there's no splinters. Very easy to pick up, handle, stack. Uh, go in very easily. Yeah. They put up with a hammer pretty easy, no problems. All right. So, verdict, what do you reckon? Uh, good thing to use, easy to use. Um, can't see why it wouldn't be a, a lifelong type product. I'll be really interested when we come back next week yeah. and we have a look at this at young Dave over there in the dam. <laughs> yes. And we see if he's taken on any water. Yes. yes. That'll be an interesting test, yes. won't it? Out in the paddock, a few showers of rain on nails and things that it's wouldn't irrelevant, be irrelevant, isn't irrelevant it? Irrelevant compared to what that would be, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Alan, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Good. And uh, I'll try and have a shave before then. What do you reckon? <laughs> Good on you mate, thank you so much for your time. See ya. So while we wait for the test and we find out if these wood shield posts are insanely waterproof, let's have a talk about the current problem we face with CCA posts. Now this post was the tensioning post in a box end assembly and it snapped. Let's explain what the problem is with that. CCA posts only have a fine layer of copper chromium arsenate protection. Posts crack Posts have knots in them, posts have staples built in them, and water gets into those posts. And what happens is, eventually, over time, the wood inside rots away and the posts eventually break and give way. That's why CCA posts typically only have a 20 to 30 year lifespan. But these posts here, if they truly do seal around the fixings that are put inside them and remain 100% watertight, there's no reason why this post couldn't last for 100 years. So having a post treated in a protective covering that's almost entirely waterproof is going to stop a lot of these problems that we experience with normal CCA posts and we take for granted as just being a pine post and they break sometimes and we have to replace them. And when they do, we're not going to face the problem of disposal of now what is considered to be toxic landfill. Instead, we strip the covering off, put it in the bin and burn the post for firewood. That's not a bad environmental solution as far as I'm concerned. They've got the thumbs up. because we're using a completely sealed post, we don't want to cut the end off at any stage and let water in. So it is important when you're setting up an H-brace with wood shield posts, that you get your measurement exactly right. If anyone ever wants me to review a post hole digger, I'd be happy to. Meantime, I'm gonna continue on by hand. Now I've got to say, there's something I'm enjoying about these posts already, and that is no splinters at all, no chance of splinters, don't have to wear gloves with them, even if you're working with them all day long. I mean, these guys are so non-toxic and so smooth, you can lick them. So to overcome the issue of not being able to cut the top rail, I'm just reversing the order in which I put my box end assembly together. Normally you'd put both posts in, then you'd trim the top rail to fit. This time, I'm fitting the top rail and using a clamp on the other post to position the post to fit. Just a bit of a workaround. To be honest, it's barely an inconvenience. And if I can do it on my own, people that usually put box end assemblies together with someone else shouldn't have a problem at all. Now up to the other end to use our clamp workaround. This clamp's going to support the post and allow me to get my angle exactly right. Now all I have to do is pin it as per normal and fill in the hole.
By using the rounded knob on the end of the pin, it's actually sealing into the plastic and there's no water going to get into that at all. Staples still go into the post quite easily. Remember, put them on an angle because it's still a wooden post underneath. And the plastic coating is no obstruction whatsoever to hammering in the staple. For those of you who've been frustrated by running wires around box end assemblies because it keeps jamming on the post, happy surprise with wood shield, because the coating's slippery, all of a sudden your wires are much easier to install on your box end assemblies. So there's a game. Gone is the need to lubricate your staples. Now, to make this box end assembly as strong as possible, I'm going to use a spiral fast. Don't forget, there's a link to spiral fast on my website, timthompsonmedia.com.au. Hit them up for a sample pack. You'll be surprised how much stronger your fences will be with spiral fast. Well, there we go. It took no longer to assemble this box end assembly than it would a normal box end assembly. I made one change in my practice and that was not trimming the top rail. Instead, I used a clamp to get my support post in exactly the right position before I rammed it in the ground. The plastic coating made the putting on of support wires so much easier. They just slipped around the post. I didn't have to lubricate them at all. And capping it off with a spiral fast should make this a really strong, long-lasting end assembly that'll be around long after I'm gone. And on that sad and depressing note, for me anyway, let's go now and see how Dave the Post is getting on, because we've left him in the farm dam for two weeks, and let's see if any of the fixings have wept and let a little bit of water in. So we brought James along today. James, how are you, mate? Not too bad, thanks. James is going to help Alan. We're going to hold the post and we're going to cut down the post, just trying to cut the plastic off on either side of the fixings. And then we're going to remove the fixings one at a time and inspect where they've been put in the plastic coating and see if any water's got in. Gentlemen, the moment of truth. <laughs> Shall we dig into this thing and see what happens? So far, so dry. Now we've cut the ends off just to make it easier to pull off the protective covering. Poor old Dave's lost his head. I think I'm gonna keep him as a souvenir. Let's dig into his body and see if any water got in. Now we've been really careful to just try and cut the covering off. And off she comes, nice and easy, one, two, three. All right, so that's our nifty fencing gadget there. And the staples are coming out. Now we were most concerned about these staples because they have a barb on them that would actually tear the plastic as it goes through. So I'm interested to see if maybe that was the cause of this staining. Yeah, let's take them all out now. All right, so we'll just pull that off. So it's pretty obvious which ones are which. And definitely we've got some leakage around the staples so the barbs don't work so well with the wooden post I can't see any signs of leakage around the screw holes to be honest with you those screw holes are pretty clean but these barbs you can definitely see the staining and you can see that the staining has been around where the barbs have torn the plastic as they've gone in where the round nail has gone in it's obviously self-sealed around it where the barb is, the holes are elongated. And I reckon that's been where our ingress of water has been, hasn't it? Yeah. Now we've got to put this in perspective. This post has been submerged in the dam for two weeks. Yes. Floating upside down with those staples fully submerged in the water for yes. two weeks. There has been some leakage 
but you're not going to get that sort of water pressure with rain or no. with hail no. or anything no. like that. Having a look at the post in profile here, I think it is blindingly obvious where the water has gone in. Here's the top of the stain. Here's the bottom of the water stain. You can see that the majority of the water stain is around these staple holes and you can see the black marks where some of the metal coating of the staple has discoloured the wood as a result of the water getting in. So, staples are the enemies of these posts. However, when we come up and we have a look at the screw hole, there is no black mark around any of these screw holes. In fact, these screw holes down the bottom are perfectly dry around them and you can see no black mark. I think we should try and cut it through here and see how far the water has infiltrated into the post. Alright, so now we're going to cut it exactly where the staples have been, right in the middle, and we're going to see how far the water's got in in two weeks of submersion in the dam. And there we go. We have absolute ingress where the staple holes have been if you're going to put them in the water. So if you're going to fence your farm dam like through the middle, don't use staples. However, I was really pleased when I came out here and you showed me a fantastic product that's actually made in the western districts of Victoria. Yes. And it does away with the need for staples completely yes. on fences. Now, that was serendipitous. I, I didn't even know about that product. And I turned up here and you just showed me yes. and you said, hey, have a look at this. Um, and that product has actually stood up to being in the water. Can you tell me a little bit more about that product, please, Ellen? It's um, a thing called Davo's fencing clip or thing like that. I just found it at the um, Elmore Field Day and bought a box and uh, I've been using them and finding them just fine. Let's cut open the post where we've had Davo's fencing clips in and see if any water's got into the post around them. Okay. Dry. Dry. No water at all. So what's the verdict, Alan? Uh, can't see there be ever a problem using it in traditional fencing, paddock fencing. Yep. It just won't come under that water pressure. Yep. And uh, so. And if you're really worried about water, maybe we should move away from the staples towards Davo's fencing clips. And yes. I might reach out to Davo's fencing clips. Yep. And I might see if they want to put a link in the description to this article if people are interested in doing away with CCA in posts, because it's a major environmental issue, isn't it? I mean, you spent most of your life in orchards. Yes. Um, and what do you think about CCA posts? Oh, anything that we can do to get away from. Uh those sort of toxins, uh, whether there's any uh, proof that it really gets in, but mm. better to avoid it. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. yeah, Even just for the sake of your hands, putting yes. in posts all day long, your skin falls off your hands, yes. doesn't it? Yep. What do you think about the product? Would you have it on your farm? Yes, yes. I've, uh, I've had black poly pipes around for since they were invented. And that's and essentially that's, what this covering is. is. It's just recycled poly pipe. And, uh, Pine posts and as convenient to use as they are. And, yep. Uh, it'd be interesting to, to trial them in a slightly bigger size because I think uh, yep. 800 kilo bull scratching himself on that may test it. Yeah, and they do come <laughs> in larger sizes, so we so might see if Woodshield will get you a few posts yeah. to try out, Alan, and we might come back and see you yep. in 12 months and have an update. What do yes. you reckon? Very good. All right, I'll, I'll uh, reach out to Woodshield and we'll see if we can get you a few. Yeah to trial out in your paddock. So summing it all up, this product has absolutely been a joy to work with. You can do it with your bare hands, you don't need to wear protective equipment to protect yourself from poisons. You're using recycled materials, so you're taking a burden of landfill away. And at the end of the day, the post can be broken down, the interior can be burnt for firewood, the exterior can be put in your recycling or sent back to Woodshield to be reused. And your wires go on the post so much easier without snagging and without binding, without having to lubricate. The little walk around for not being able to trim the end post turned out to be incredibly easy and it probably saved time overall. 
So in my opinion, this product gets a big thumbs up and I'm looking forward to using it into the future. Oh, and hey, don't forget, give us a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and the website's timthompsonmedia.com.au. You've got no idea how much that helps. See you next week.